So listen, Eric, let's talk about WrestleMania and we'll close up with a little bit of Vince McMahon news. So if you've uh, heard all you need to hear about all that, then, uh, don't worry. Uh, I do want to mention that, uh, you know, we're, we're in the, the middle of the biggest WrestleMania week, maybe of all time. Uh, as a reminder, the hall of fame is going to be on Friday night, right after SmackDown on Peacock. We know now that rock's grandmother is going to be going in along with Muhammad Ali along with the U.S. Express, along with Bull Nakano, along with Thunderbolt Patterson, and with Paul Heyman. And we found out watching Monday Night Raw that the tribal chief, Roman Reigns, will be the one who introduces Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman going into the Hall of Fame in Philadelphia just feels right. What say you? Gosh, I couldn't feel more right. Where, yeah. where else would be more appropriate? Oh, yeah, maybe, Matt, maybe <clears throat> Madison Square Garden. But this is so appropriate. I'm happy for Paul and Paul's influence on the business is just undeniable. His talent, even more undeniable as a performer. Um, Paul's done, he, what an amazing story. You know, what an amazing story. His movie, his story is a movie for sure. Really, really, it's pretty amazing. And he, and Roman Reigns is going to induct him. That's pretty awesome. Surprising, but awesome. And a heavy bloodline influence on the show, the hall of fame, not just because Roman and Paul are going to be there, but you know, rock's going to be doing something with uh, his grandmother. So big bloodline influence. It's going down after SmackDown this Friday night on Peacock. I can't wait to see what Paul Heyman has to say. He says he's going to call it in the ring. Uh, as they say, he's just going to go with what the audience is, is into. Maybe they want some old school. Maybe they want some current. Uh, we'll see, but I, for one, am looking forward to it. I wonder okay. like what I, what I got when they set me up for the hall of fame back in 21, I said, okay, now we're going to assign you a writer. <laughs> what? Really? Okay. You know, it's what they do, what they did back then. So I wonder if they're going to assign Paul a writer. Can you imagine being that person? I don't, I don't think we have to worry about that. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Uh, we should mention they set a record on Monday night, you know, with, with, they had one of the biggest crowds they ever had last week in Chicago, but just last night, it's the all time gate record for Monday night raw. I think we're going to see more and more of those records as we march on. Let's talk about night one of WrestleMania. It's going to be a big show. It's Rhea Ripley and Becky Lynch. I, for one, am excited for that one. I feel like they turned the volume up on that bout when Becky did an interview uh, promoting her book a couple of days ago. Uh, I guess it was maybe last week, maybe a week ago, she sat down and, and, and they asked her about the Rhea Ripley spot where she was doing the stink face on Nia Jax and boy, Becky was not kind about it at all. She said that that sort of thing used to happen in AEW or WWE all the time. And she was a part of a revolution or an evolution, whatever you want to call it to change all of that. And she worked very hard to make sure it wasn't just about that and fulfilling male fantasies in the crowd. And she didn't want her little girl to see that sort of thing and think that if she wants to be a WWE superstar, that's the way to do it. And that's what she's supposed to do. And that's what people want and blah, blah, blah. And she said, I think it fucking sucks. And when I saw that, I said, wow, that's honest. That's real life. That's, that's not a WWE approved statement. And then of course I'm watching the MMA hour and I saw Becky Lynch attack Rhea Ripley and reference the daughter and all that. And I thought, man, this is wrestling done, right? What'd yep. you think? What'd you think of the stink face? What'd you think of the comment? And what'd you think with the MMA hour angle with Rhea and Becky? I mean, I think putting it into context, I, I think it was a work of art. Now that's yeah. assuming that the stink face was a part of the plan all along. Like this whole thing was laid out act one, act two, act three, act one opens up the inciting moment, just in a little element in the storyline arc. The inciting moment is when something occurs with your, one of your central characters that thrust them into an entirely different situation. So if that was the stink face was part one or act, the inciting moment in act one and this was all part of a story arc with, with promotion, then it's a work of art. Or it could be Rhea does the stink face. Hey, I got an idea. Let's react to that. I don't know which one it is. Either one that was very effective. I think they've done such a great job with Rhea and Becky, even last night on Raw. 
another great pull apart, just yeah. raising the attention, raising the attention, raising the intensity without giving the audience what they want. That was really, I know people are going to go, what the fuck is he talking about? Sometimes the shows that are not necessarily the most newsworthy or noteworthy because, you know, not enough really big things happen. But when the structure of the show and the timing of that show needs to be precise and you're managing people's emotions and still trying to advance story, it's a really hard thing to do. It's very difficult to do. <clears throat> but they're they're threading that needle so perfectly that even though it's like, no, it wasn't a great Rob, but it really, really was in terms of the formatting and, and the goal of that particular show. I thought it was awesome. But that that scene in particular, I thought was extremely well done. Really a fun match. I can't wait to see it. It seems like it's got some steam on it. Looking forward to it. We've also got a tag team championship ladder match, and uh, we're still filling this card out. Uh, but as you take a look there, man, it looks like we've got a whole bunch of moving parts in this. Well, we've got DIY. We're big Gargano fans in this household. We got Grayson Waller and Austin theory. We got the Miz and our truth, which is going to be awesome. We got new day. We got the judgment day. There's a lot of really fun talent in this. I'm glad everybody's getting a WrestleMania payday and a ladder match. Man, that's been a big, a big part of WrestleMania for as long as I can remember, but a tag team ladder match, this is going to be chaos and maybe controlled chaos, but wow, this sets itself up for some crazy hot spots, Don't you think our truth, man? I want to see, I, I love that guy. He is so entertaining and yes. it, quite honestly, an amazing performer. He's so gifted physically, athletically. Physically, I mean, in terms of the shape that he's in, athletically, in terms of what he's capable of doing with that physique, his character work is off the charts, off the charts. He's so much fun. Him in there with Miz, I don't know, man. I normally would, wouldn't look forward to something like this, to be really honest about it. It's just not my thing. Too many moving pieces, not really any personal issues, no real stakes other than the gimmick match itself. Um, but I guarantee it's going to be one of the more entertainment entertaining segments on the show. Well, I mean, it feels like there's stakes. You got the tag champs in there. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. Yeah. There's eh, tag team titles. Yeah. Whatever. Listen to you. We've also got Ray Mysterio teaming up with dragon Lee to take on Santos Escobar and Dominic Mysterio. Um, I mean, anytime we see Ray Mysterio at WrestleMania, I'm a fan of it. Him standing across the ring from Dominic this time not in the singles like last year, but in a tag and boy, dragon Lee, goodness gracious. Wasn't that long ago. This fellow was wrestling in Mexico and in AEW. And now less than two years later, 18 months later, he's at WrestleMania, the biggest WrestleMania of all time. That should be fun. We've also got the Usos going head to head Jay versus Jimmy. Of course, Bruce used to say on something to wrestle brothers don't fight, but man, Jay Uso versus Jimmy Uso as silly as it is. Yeet versus no yeet. And, uh, I guess little Wayne's going to be there because we saw Jay invite him this brother storyline. I mean, it's another piece of the bloodline story. And if that's what they're going to do is try to blow this brother story off at WrestleMania, no better place, no bigger stage. I'm happy for these guys. Yeah. I, and Jay's fun to watch too. He, I mean, they all are, don't get me wrong, but there's something about Jay's character. Just Every time I see him on TV, I smile. Jay's going to be a huge single star unless they put the band back together and they go after some tag straps. We'll see what happens. Speaking of tags, boy, talk about pressure. Jade Cargill is going to be eat up with it. She's tagging with Naomi and Bianca Belair. We haven't seen much out of Jade since she came over from AEW. I understand she's been putting in a lot of work down at the performance center but they're going to have their hands full as they're taking on damage control. What a big stage it is for Jade. I mean, this is a coming out party for her and what a supporting cast. Bianca Belair has had some incredible WrestleMania moments. I think everybody listening to this knows how talented Naomi is and Oscar, man, this is, this is loaded. If you're in the ladies wrestling, you got something for everybody in this one. It's a lot of fun. Just a lot of fun. And Jade Cargo, I don't know if they're doing a documentary or if she's documenting 
you know, her career starting in AEW and spending a couple of years there and <clears throat> not really doing much after the first six months or so, but to get that big break. I mean, her career, she's kind of like Bill Goldberg in a way. She hasn't had, she has, hasn't been around that long. Yeah. I mean, yes, she showed up in, in AEW back in, what was it? 21, 20, 22, 20, whenever it was when, uh, 21, I think when she was, 21, with Shaq. Cody was in with Shaq. I was yep. there that night. Yeah. I we were there that when she made her debut on TV, maybe, but I mean, she was green. So green, like maybe out of wrestling school for seven or eight hours, kind of green. And now here she is in the main event. And I'm really, really glad that WWE didn't expose her, put her out there too soon because she wasn't ready. And when you have that much potential, you want to give it, give that person, not it. I was speaking about the talent, it, not the person, it. But you want to give that person every opportunity to succeed. And they've taken her time with her. I'm sure they've, she's been spending a ton of time in the ring and training and getting comfortable because it's a whole new world for her stepping into a WWE ring versus the limited exposure she had in AEW. So I'm excited for her. I hope somebody's documenting this because it'll be great for her to look back on someday. She's going to have an amazing career, dude. I don't, I don't know where she's going to end up, but she's going to have, you know, barring injuries or any other self-inflicted wounds. She's going to have an amazing career. There won't be any self-inflicted wounds if I had to guess. Uh, her husband's done okay. It's worth a Google. I, I want to mention. Oh, no, that. no, I know, and I've heard. And when I say self-inflicted, I mean people can make decisions that you know affect the outcome of her career. Who knows what they're sure. going to be? But what I've heard is that she's an extremely well-rounded and grounded individual. I don't know that, but I've heard that from a number of people. How about this too? She's had sixty-five matches total. All of those matches were filmed, every single one of them. Now, she did work one AEW house show called The House Always Wins, but it was at Daly's Place, and I believe it was recorded. But all of her matches, besides that one match, have been on TV. Her only match in WWE so far has been the Royal Rumble. So you, you, you're in this multi-person Royal Rumble match in January, and the next time we see you in a match, not just a, a segment like we've seen, but a match is WrestleMania. And the That's mind boggling, isn't it? That's, I mean, who does that? Who's ever done that before? So, okay, yeah. nobody. Yeah. <laughs> Don't have to call Dave Meltzer and figure that one out. No, no history needed. Nobody. You imagine that in a sentence. Hey, uh, after sixty-five matches, we're going to put you in a match at WrestleMania. What? <laughs> so the pressure is on there. Uh, we're pulling for it. We're big fans of Jade here. I'm also a big fan of this next match because I think this has the potential of being a show stealer. I think it's going to exceed expectations. And I think they have a lot of opportunity for not just a great match, but an incredible story. I'm talking about Sami Zayn versus Gunther. Gunther at this point is the longest reigning intercontinental champion in history. I thought they did a phenomenal job with him and Chad Gable and telling that story. I was pulling for Gable. I thought that he could be the guy to do it. I believed in it. And I was really glad to see Gable be taken a little more seriously and not just be a comedy act. And we have, we don't have to say much more about Sami Zayn. You and I are huge fans of what he's been able to do. The stuff he did at the beginning of last year with bloodline was off the charts, all of his bloodline contributions. But when he got his title shot against Roman, when he hit Roman with a chair last year at the Royal rumble, I mean, it was an all time WWE moment. And there's a lot of fun story here. Can Sammy be the guy to dethrone Gunther for the intercontinental title? And I know a lot of hardcore Sammy fans and just hardcore WWE or bloodline fans. They really wanted Sammy to win the world title last year. It didn't happen, but that intercontinental title means more than it has in a long time. Now in large part of this lengthy reign that Gunther's had, but what we just saw on Monday was an incredible training vignette down at the performance center where Sami Zayn was looking to Chad Gable to see, Hey man, can you help me figure this out? And we saw Gable putting him through the paces and getting him ready. And it was a nice Rocky montage type moment, but I got to tell you, Eric, I don't, I know we're not trying to fantasy book here necessarily, 
but I kind of got my fingers crossed that Sammy doesn't win it. And it's because, and he has it won, but Chad turns on him and Chad becomes a badass suplex and wrestling machine heel. What do you think? I'm so conflicted with that one. Cause I really, really want to see Sammy. I think we've just scratched the, sur- not scratched the surface. We got a really good look at his abilities as a character last year, but I don't think we saw everything there is to see. Agreed. I think there's more, there's way more under the hood. And I would really like to see that get its opportunity. However, you bring up a good point. You bring up a good point. But I'm I'm gonna pull for Sammy. I'm 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 gonna I'm not betting. Don't get any ideas, Conrad. I just don't. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm gonna bet on Sam, Sammy, but it's a completely emotional bet, not a logical one. Well, listen, I could go one of two ways because on the one hand, I hope Gable turns on him. So now we've got a great feud for him and Sammy. And I think a badass heel Chad Gable will get over. And I, I, I agree with you, Connor, but I think it's too soon. I well, don't think they've developed enough of a relationship yet, and they haven't solidified that. We don't feel it yet. We know that it exists on paper because, well, it's two weeks old. But there's, that's not enough for heat. It's just not. It needs more time before that turn would work for me. I, I don't disagree, which is why I think I could also be excited with Gunther losing the title because realistically, if you look back at WrestleMania or Royal Rumble last year, it came down to Gunther and Cody as the last two guys in the ring. And certainly once upon a time, the intercontinental champion was the number one contender for the world champion. And I could totally see Gunther versus Cody at a pay-per-view. Oh, I don't know in Germany which they have lined up on the books. So oh Gunther gosh. challenging Cody for the world title there could work. Now, would that make sense if he was the intercontinental champ? Maybe not. So maybe perhaps Sammy does win and we get that turn later, but it feels inevitable for me. And I, for one, am really looking forward to a badass Chad Gable. What do you think? You think, you think it's Gunther and Cody one day at a German PLE for the world title? That just makes way too much sense. It does. How could you not do that? By the way, Gunther's, I mean, he's a scary looking dude. This guy looks like if you could create an AI wrestling character that would come to life, it would be Gunther. Gunther. Am I saying that right? Gunther. Yeah, you're nailing it. Cool. It's all those years of German in high school. We're nailing the main event too, man. It's Roman Reigns and The Rock versus Seth Rollins and Cody Rhodes. And the stakes are, if our heroes win, it's a fair and square fight on night two. But if these bad guy, villain Samoans, if they win, it's bloodline rules on Sunday. Just based on the stakes and the rumor and innuendo, that maybe we might see possibly stone cold and, or John Cena. We talked about that last week when we got that shot of the rock beat down on Cody Rhodes in the parking lot in Chicago and that big tractor trailer in the background, it feels like it's going to be bloodline rules on Sunday and they're going to pull out all kinds of shenanigans. So if I were a betting man and I'm not asking you to make a bet, Eric, I know you're getting your hair going again. Like you like it. We don't want to do that. I got to think. Roman Reigns and The Rock are going to leave them laying and win night one. What say you? I can't imagine it going any other way. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's right there. Those are the state. I mean, it's, so, it's set up so well. I'm just curious though, where Austin or a scene are going to fit in. It's the only thing I have questions about, but yeah, no, I, I agree with you hundred percent. That in and of itself would be an incredible WrestleMania, but we're only halfway done. Night two has Drew McIntyre versus Seth freaking Rollins for the world title. This was the highest rated segment on last week's Monday night raw. When those guys, along with CM Punk, were just verbally sparring, going back and forth. Punk is going to be there. He's going to be at ringside doing commentary. You got to assume he's going to be involved. I could go either way with this. I could see Seth winning. I could see Drew winning. I know the report is out there that 
Drew has not signed another contract and that would lend most people to believing, well, he's not winning. I don't know if I necessarily believe that report respectfully. If you're drew, why the fuck would you leave now? Uh, I think drew wins this and maybe it's because he had a little help from CM Punk. What say you? First of all, just, I want to say this right off the top. Drew McIntyre is doing absolutely the best. Nothing else is close character work that he's ever done in his career. Yes. Every week he gets better and better. Every minute he's on camera, he's getting better and better and better and more believable along the way. He's not like, oh, I know I'll, I'll get a new gimmick. No, he's becoming almost like Diamond Dallas Page in a way. He's becoming, I think, closer to who he is as opposed to being a over-the-top character. And he's just fucking nailing it. Hey, Eric, does that church look familiar? What you're looking at right there? Oh, uh, no. Should it? Y'all used it in Ace as an eight storyline. In a church? You know, yeah. Well, oh. you had a scene yeah. there for Aces and Eights in that exact same room. Shout out to Jeremy Borash. Not saying that he was the connective tissue, but if I had to guess, he may have been. Yeah, could be. No, don't, don't recognize it. Seth as well. Seth is doing great work as a character. I mean, they're both yeah. it's just fucking crazy. Okay. Now that I've said that, the, the speculation about Drew not having signed his contract yet, ask yourself, where is he going to go? Right. Is he going to retire? If he's going to retire. Then yeah, maybe he won't sign the contract. Where is he going to go? You think Drew McIntyre is going to go to AEW? No. So I think the whole conversation about his contract is just wasted air. I, for one, think those two guys, along with Cody Rhodes have been the MVP of WWE for the last year. Uh, Drew McIntyre is on another level with some of his character work. Seth Rollins has been putting on clinics one after another. These two guys are two of the, uh, I know they're not in the main event, but boy, in an alternate <laughs> universe, they are because this has been great stuff. Uh, we're also going to see, uh, the pride take on final Testament. What a name that is. It's carrying Cross's new outfit with the, uh, authors of pain. And of course, uh, the pride is Bobby Lashley and the street profits. It's a six man Philadelphia street fight presented by gin and juice, which is awesome. I just absolutely love that. We have a hip hop influence on this show, like little Wayne and make mill. And I like that in Philadelphia, we've got a street fight like that feels like ECW style stuff. Uh, I think that should be entertaining. We've also got LA Knight and AJ Styles. LA Knight, I think a lot of people thought might be challenging for Seth Rollins' world title. It's not to be, but boy, he's got more than a worthy opponent in AJ Styles. AJ Styles looks bigger and better than ever. Both of these guys are going to be in line for a title shot and big things at later PLEs down the line. What do you expect from this one, Eric? Phenomenal match, phenomenal match. And I love watching AJ in the ring. I, I can't wait to see this one really. And LA night again, what a story shoot career wise. What a great story at the stage of his career to be getting this kind of a break on this kind of a platform. Good for him. Before we move on too much more though, I want to go back a little bit. Shout out to Karrion cross. Keep your eye on him. Watch, watch where he goes from here. You heard it here first, fans. You're sold on him. Huh? You're sold on carrying cross. Absolutely. And I think we're going to get, I don't know why I feel this way. I don't know why. I just feel like his time has come and we're about to see it emerge. I think if anything, it's overdue. Heck of a nice guy, but he's had a hell of a look and a great presentation for a long, long time. And he's I was, smart. I was he's excited to have him. Wicked smart. I was excited to have him at Ric Flair's last match. I couldn't believe he wasn't with WWE anymore. I'm glad he's back where he belongs. Uh, I hope that they can get him super hot. And and I want to ask you about LA Knight. Do you think if anything that their timing has been off on LA Knight, it feels like if they were going to pull the trigger with him, maybe they could have done it earlier this year or last year, rather when he got that title shot against Roman Reigns, I wonder in hindsight, was that premature because he was hotter than chicken grease once upon a time. He still is. 
Still but is. You think you're right. Him. You're right. Timing is not, I don't think it was intentional. I don't think anybody yes. made a decision. No. I think circumstances and the moving pieces that were moving at a faster clip than some people anticipated and just all of the changes that has taken place over the last six months or a year. I don't think timing has done LA Knight any favors, but he's got equity. He's got a very loyal and solid fan base that are just waiting for him to get that opportunity. Timing has not been ideal, but it hasn't killed him. It's just slowed him down. I think it's just a matter of the window. And look, all of everything that we've been watching for the last six months has all been geared toward main event. Or excuse me, all been geared towards WrestleMania. Once WrestleMania clears, we're done. Now we're moving on to the next WrestleMania, meaning it's almost like a hitting the refresh button. That's where I think windows of opportunity are going to start revealing themselves within the next I say within 90 days of WrestleMania, I think you're going to see some of the chess pieces repositioned with guys like LA Knight, Karrion Cross, and obviously others. But that's it's one of the fascinating things for me in, in WrestleMania is knowing that you know all roads lead to WrestleMania, roads being story, characters, everything's ideally been pointing towards this for ideally a year. We know that's not true, but the A story for sure, even getting there in various ways, even the B story. But boom, we're hitting that reset button Monday. And that's when I think for the next 90 days, you start watching and try to predict where the LA Knights and carrying crosses and, and others are, are going to go. Are we going to see more Jey Uso as the singles? Is he going to get that big push that he clearly deserves? Sami Zayn, same thing. Gunther. Just a lot of really interesting, fun, established talent that are on the verge of taking that next, that next step. That's the fun part. We got Logan, Paul, Kevin Owens, and Randy Orton in a three-way dance. Randy Orton is as good as he ever was. And Kevin Owens is still one of the most charismatic, best promos around. And Logan Paul, man, he has taken to professional wrestling like few before him but seemingly universally hated by the WWE audience ought to be a lot of hate here in Philly for Logan Paul. They're going to love Randy Orton. We're going to see a lot of RKOs out of nowhere. And I'm curious if, how heavy the story gets between Kevin Owens and Randy. What do you expect from this one? I don't know storyline wise, but I know visually aesthetically the match itself with Logan. In, I mean, Holy crap. What a ring full of talent. Like, I, I mean, I'm, I'm shocked. I'm just shocked. This is going to be such a fun match to watch. You know, Logan Paul is just freaky good. Like, freaky, freaky, freaky good. What has he been in the business two years now? Yeah, less. Huh? Something like that? Yeah. And look at him. And he's in there with two of the best, Randy Orton. I don't think anybody's, other than Shawn Michaels, nobody else is in the same conversation with Rand, with uh, Randy Orton for the last 25 years. Nobody. Okay, Ray Mysterio. That's it. And even, even it's hard to compare Ray and, and, and Randy because Ray, it's such a different style. He's under the mask, right? So the facials, the drama, the way of storytelling is different with Ray. Randy Orton, there is nobody better than Randy. And, and Kevin Owens, every time I watch Kevin wrestle, I, I find myself watching with my jaw open. So, like, it's incredible. And like I say, Logan, this is going to be fun. You know, we I, were just I, would, I would buy WrestleMania just to see this match. That's how fun, fun it's going to be. Well, thankfully it's pretty affordable. Thanks to uh, peacock. And by the way, oh, there this, you go. <laughs> this will be the last WrestleMania on peacock. I think I could be wrong on that, but I think it's maybe it'll overlap a little bit, but we are going to see WrestleMania on Netflix in the future, which is pretty crazy to think about. But I wanted to mention, we were sort of heaping praise on Jade Cargill earlier. We just totally missed Logan Paul. My man's only had 11 matches. His first match ever was at <laughs> WrestleMania. This will be his third WrestleMania in his 12th match. 
all of his matches have been on pay-per-view except for one Friday night SmackDown in February where he beat the Miz in 12 and a half minutes. But other than that, it's just Royal Rumbles and Summer Slams and Money in the Banks and Crown Jewels and Elimination Chambers and now his third WrestleMania. They've spent a lot of time making sure his matches are perfect. He's delivered every time. Can't wait to see it. And I can't wait to see Bailey finally get her WrestleMania moment. Charlotte's had the WrestleMania moment. Sasha's had the WrestleMania moment. Becky's had the WrestleMania moment. And now it feels like it's Bailey's time. She was the fourth member of the four horsewomen, if you want to call them that. They led the charge for this women's revolution. And she's yet to have, in my mind, the big WrestleMania moment. It's got to be her picking up the win and winning the world title from EO Sky. That's what I'm banking on. What say you? I agree 100%. It is her time. The time has come. So ring that bell, baby. Ring that bell. And it's finally going to happen. The time has come. Cody Rhodes is going to finish his story on Sunday night against Roman Reigns. I suspect it's going to be bloodline rules. I suspect we're going to hear some glass break and maybe we won't see someone. And I, for one, also expect Mama Rhodes to be sitting front row, maybe slap the rock. And man, if I had my druthers, I'd love to see stone cold doing a beer bash with with michelle runnels how great would that be as a oh show? come on now that's gotta happen i love it somebody make that happen somebody's gotta make that happen i want to see that i'm calling steve as soon as i'm done he's got some info. 